Okay, going to debunk this Ben the Baptist. He's doing this video he's trying to trying to refute the uh, biblical fact that Matthew chapter 24 is not written to Christians because first of all, Christians didn't not even exist until at the Book of Acts. But he's trying to debunk this this biblical truth that Matthew chapter 24, Mark 13, Luke 17, Luke 21, Jesus was speaking to Jews in those passage, passages. He was not speaking to Christians. And but of course, he he believes in replacement theology, so he thinks that we are the Jews. So. And this actually proves my point that the post-trip rapture heresy is actually a gateway to, sorry, just drank something, but gateway to replacement theology. So, because you have to say that we've replaced the Jews in order to make uh, Matthew 24 basically apply for Christians. Because I'm going to show you two verses at the end of this that he actually won't even go through. He won't deal in this video that prove that Matthew 24, he was speaking to Jews. Jesus was speaking to Jews. So the only way you can make it for Christians is if you say, well, we've replaced the Jews. You know? And, and not, not, not only that, too, Matthew 24 is dispensationally in the time of Jacob's trouble, but of course he's non-dispensational. So, so basically, I'll put it this way. Replacing theology, non-dispensationalism, and Matthew, or, and, and, um, weird, but replacement theology, non-dispensationalism, and post-trip rapture all go hand in hand, because you cannot have one without the other. And the reason why the post-trip rapture doctrine is very satanic is because doctrine and, and uh, salvation is different in the time of Jacob's trouble, falsely called the tribulation. Because right, right now we're saved by grace through faith, uh, through Jesus Christ. We're not saved by our works. But this is not the case in the time of Jacob's trouble. First, first of all, you can't take the mark of the beast. Revelation 14, 9 through 11 says if any man takes it, not just lost people, if any man takes it, uh, they basically get God's wrath and go to hell. And it's also the thing of Revelation 14, 12, which talks about keeping the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. You can also compare this to James 2, 24 to 26. You know, uh, how, how faith, if it has not works, is dead being alone. Or James 2, 17 talks about that. And of course, you can compare this to Matthew 24, 13. He that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. So it's, it's not by faith alone, or grace through faith alone in the time of Jacob's trouble. It is faith plus works, because you can't take the mark, and you have to uh, you have to do certain works. You have to endure it to the end. So you get into all kinds of problems. So you get into work salvation. You'll get into replacement theology, because, again, it's clearly for the Jewish people. So you have to say, well, we've replaced the Jews. And you get into all kinds of survivalism, and you get all this other stuff and you also start you also will begin to, to basically deny eternal security because you're going to take passages uh that are in the time of jacob's trouble which prove you can lose your salvation and basically apply it for us today i mean you get into so many problems when you into this post trip rapture heresy so let's get right into this and debunk this uh post trip rapture insanity so and also i want to point out too i think i said this before but he's going to say over and over again the tribulation the tribulation again the bible never uses the phrase the tribulation for this time period it's called the time of jacob's trouble okay um again just want to point that out you've heard it before the mount of olives discourse or the olivet discourse whatever you want to call it is only for the jews this is an argument repeated ad nauseum. It's mindlessly regurgitated over and over and over again by pre-tribbers in order to prop up their false doctrine. But is it true? Well, obviously the answer is no. And I'm going to prove it to you because, in fact, the rapture is described in the exact same way as it's described in the Olivet Discourse in other passages that pre-tribbers purport to be for saved Christians. Therefore, we can conclude that Matthew 24, Mark 13, and Luke 21 are also for saved Christians. Okay, so if Matthew 24 is talking about the rapture, where, where, where is the mention of dead saints rising? You know, show me one verse in Matthew 24 where it talks about dead saints rising first. Because 1 Corinthians 15, 51 to 58, common rapture passage, uh, talks about that. So if, if Matthew 24 is talking about the rapture, then where are the mention of dead saints? It's actually, if you look at the thing, is what he does, he compares Revelation chapter 1 verse 7 to Matthew 24, 29 and says, that, see, it's, talk it's the same thing. Uh, no, those are talking about the second coming of Jesus Christ, not talking about the rapture. Okay? Getting ahead of myself, but you're going to see, he he'll go to verses that talk about the second coming and then basically compare them with rapture passages and say, see, the same, see they're saying the same thing. You know, it's it's confusion. It's not just he's deceived. I think there's a lying spirit, lying spirit behind this because it's very, very deceptive what he does. Take a look at what I'm talking about. Revelation 1, 7. Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him, 
and all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. Even so, amen. Well, this is not talking about the rapture. Again, talking about the second coming. Here's some proof of that. You can compare that verse to Zechariah chapter 12. It talks about whom they have pierced. Uh, compare that with this. Let me show you what it says. And I will pour out upon the house of David and upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem the spirit of grace and of supplications, and they shall look upon, look upon me whom they have pierced. And they shall mourn for him as one mourneth for his only son, and they shall be in bitterness for him as one that is in bitterness for his firstborn. And go on there. But this is talking about, if you look at the full context, because there, there, there are the, the uh, tribulation, quote unquote, is not just in Revelation. It also is stuff about it in Daniel, there's stuff about it in Jeremiah. So, but this is one, it still talks about they're looking at him whom they have pierced. So you can compare that back with Revelation chapter was it was it chapter one verse seven was what he was trying to use. So yeah, it's talking about the second coming. It's not talking about the rapture. But you're going to see he does this over and over again. He takes verses that are talking about the second coming, and then uh, takes verses that are talking about the rapture, and then kind of jumbles them together and says, "See, they're saying the same thing." You know, insanity. Let's continue. That much that matches up perfectly with First Thessalonians 4:16, which says, "For the Lord Himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Notice that the dead in Christ shall rise first. Where is that mentioned in Revelation 1 or Matthew chapter 24? See what he's doing? He's taking a passage that does about the second coming, and then, then taking a passage about the rapture, and then mixing them together, trying to prove his point. You know, it's deception. Now, every single solitary soul that is living on the face of the earth is going to look on the Lord Jesus Christ at the rapture. And the Bible says that no matter where you are. 1 Thessalonians 4.17 Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Now, notice how this happens after dead saints are, are risen. Again, where is any of this mentioned in Matthew 24 and Revelation chapter 1? It's not there. He's, it, this is talking about the rapture, absolutely. Revelation 7, or 1, 7 is talking about the second coming. You know, Again, it's, it's deceptive what he's doing. You know, I mean, again, all you got to do is, is here, like, here's how you pin it to the wall. You just tell them, you know, where is dead scenes rising first? Where is that mentioned? And also, uh, the First Corinthians 15, 51 and 54 talks about what happens in the moment of a twinkling of an eye. Uh, Matthew chapter 24 verse 9, 29 let me show you that uh, what's described in 20, uh, 20, Matthew 24 verse 29 is not there's no way it could happen in twinkling, twinkling of an eye let me show you that Matthew chapter 24 verses 29 and this is, of course is the main one they always have to run to Matthew 24, 29. Here's what they always say for the they'll say this proves the post tribulation rapture immediately after the tribulation See right there, immediately after the tribulation, um, keep reading, after the tribulation of those days, okay? It doesn't say after the tribulation, it's after the tribulation of those days, okay? Shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heaven shall be shaken, and then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, okay? Compare this back to Zechariah chapter 12, verse 10. They're mourning on him whom they have pierced. It's talking about the second coming. And they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds and in, in, uh, in the clouds of heaven with a, with power and great glory. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and he shall gather together his elect from the four winds of, of the uh, of heaven to the other. Okay, if this is talking about the rapture, why are the angels gathering him together? Okay, we're called up in a moment of twinkling of an eye. We're not gathered by the angels. So this is this is talking about this is very clearly talking about the second coming, not the rapture. You know, it's not you know, again just. The, the, the deception of these guys is really it hurts my brain that's, that's what it comes down to this letter to the church of Thessalonica is obviously not to the Jews but people claim that so Paul was, was not uh, so basically Paul sorry I, sorry I got mixed up there it was not to the Jews yeah he was speaking to Gentiles but that is a rapture passage see again what he's doing he's taking rapture passages and then taking second coming passages and mixing them together you know he, he was not speaking to Jews, absolutely. He was speaking to Gentiles. He was telling them about the catching way of the bride of Christ. Mark 13, Luke 21, Matthew 24, 
does not apply to Christians. Well, how can that be the case when Jesus literally describes the exact same rapture that you just read about? See right there, he says the exact same thing. We're going to see about that. He doesn't say always similar, he says it's the exact same thing, really. So basically, we're called up in the tenth of an eye, but then the angels have to gather us together and all this other stuff, and the tribes are mourning on the earth, you know, it's the exact same thing. I don't think so. There, in the book of Thessalonians and Revelation 1 7. Mark 14, 62 says, And Jesus said, I am, and ye shall see the Son of Man sitting on the right hand of power and coming in the clouds of heaven. Mark 13, 26. And then shall they see the Son of Man coming in the clouds. Well, Revelation 1... Okay, I want to actually look at that myself because quite often these Anderson goons, they'll rip passages out of context. What was it? Mark chapter 13, verse 26. I want to make sure we get the whole context of the passage. 13.26. So yeah, he's he, again, he's going to a second coming passage. He won't read the whole passage. This, again, Mark 13.24.27 is again like Matthew 24.13. It's a second coming uh, uh, couple of verses. But in those days, after the tribulation, the sun shall be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars of heaven shall fall up, and the powers that are in heaven shall be shaken. And then shall they see the Son of Man in the clouds with um, great power and glory. And then shall he send his angels to gather together his elect from the four winds, from the uttermost part of the earth to the uttermost part of heaven. Okay? He says this is exactly the same as uh, the First Thessalonians 4.17. Really? Let's see about that. First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 17. Uh, here it is. And the Lord, sh uh, then the Lord Himself shall descend. I'll start at verse sixteen. Then the Lord sh Himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Where was that mentioned in Mark thirteen? It wasn't. Then we which are alive and re and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord near. And so we uh, so shall we ever be with the Lord. Uh, comfort themselves with these words. Um, how is this? He, okay, he's, again, he says this is exactly the same. Okay, how is this exactly the same? Uh, where are angels coming picking us up? We're called up. Where does it mention angels coming to gather us together? It's not the same thing. You know? Again, taking second coming passages and mixing it with uh, rapture passages. Very deceptive. And I, I cannot, I, again, you know, typical these Anderson goons, they're always very deceptive. I mean, this is why you really have to look at the verses yourself, not just like blindly follow what they say. 1-7, supposedly not for the Jews, says that Jesus is going to come in the clouds and then every eye shall see him. Mark 13, 26, supposedly exclusively for the Jews, but it says exactly what Revelation 1-7 says. We're talking about the rapture here first. Okay, again, he keeps going over and over again. Revelation 1-7 is a second coming passage, okay? Again, just compare the two. They're not, they're not the same. I mean, this kind of, I mean... I mean, the, it hurts my brain. That's how deceptive these guys are. 27 of the same chapter. And then shall he send his angels and shall gather together his elect from the four winds from the uttermost part of the earth to the uttermost part of heaven. Next okay, so if, again, if this is the rapture, why are the angels gathering us together? First Thessalonians chapter 4 says we're called up, we're just called together in the clouds. Where is the mention of angels gathering us together? You know, it's a second coming passage. Matthew 24, 30, And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great... You notice how it says the Son of Man comes in the clouds. It says we're gathered together with him in the clouds. You know? Let me show you the verse again. Uh, where is it? Or no, sorry, I meant it. said it was with them in the clouds, but to meet the Lord in the air. You know? Very, very deceptive. I mean, again, it's hurting my brain. That's, uh, that's why I, I typically don't watch these guys, because they're just, they're so deceptive. Uh, let me just go back there. Glory. Verse 31, And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds. Oh, by the way, I should also mention, the when it says his elect, it's actually, I mean, I'll say it's talking about Christians. Uh, mostly it's talking about Jews, mostly. When it says his elect, it's mostly talking about Jews, not Christians. But again, he's replacing theology, so he thinks we are the Jews. Yeah. From one end of heaven to the other. 1 Thessalonians 4, verses 16 and 17, describe the rapture in the exact same way. It describes the rapture. Uh, the word rapture is not mentioned there. 
Okay, so it, it describes the rapture. It describes the rapture. No, it describes the catching up of the body of Christ, not the rapture. These unbiblical terms. We have to get out of these using these unbiblical terms. Way as it's described in Matthew 24 and Mark 13. Therefore, how oh, can so you? It's the exact same way. Okay, so where where is angels gathering us together? You know, where 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 are the tribes of the earth mourning? If it's quote exactly the same, you know, he just lied. It's not exactly the same. You know. And it's also kind of funny, too, because he's not saying the people look in your Bible. So he's just quoting. He'll say, okay, what the Bible says here, the Bible says there. He's not telling the people to actually look in their Bibles themselves. And they'll clearly see that, no, they're not, quote, exactly the same. They're not talking about the same thing. I mean, this is why uh, I stress it, that you should always, when a preacher is, is not telling people to look in their Bibles, a very, 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 uh, a lot of red flags with a very bad sign, a lot of red flags. And that's what he's doing. He's not saying, hey, look in your Bibles to here, look in your Bibles to there. Because then he knows that, you know, if you look in your Bibles, you'll see that they're not describing the same event. You sit there and say that Matthew 24 and Mark 13 does not apply to Christians. When the books that do apply to Christians, according to pre-tribbers, say the same thing. No, they don't say the same thing. I already showed that before. Now, let me show you the verses that he will not go through that prove that those books are written to Jews. Matthew 24. Let me show you this. Matthew chapter 24, verse 16. He won't deal, he, he can't handle these verses. Then let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains. Uh, what are Christians doing in Judea? Huh? He's talking about Jews. Chapter down to verse 20. But pray you that your flight be not in the winter, neither on the Sabbath day. What are, what are Christians doing observing the Sabbath? You know? Um, and when in Romans 13 lists the commander in a New Testament Christian, he doesn't mention keeping the Sabbath. You know? Now, same, same thing with Mark 13. Same thing is mentioned there. Mark chapter 13. Where is the? I forget. I don't remember where it was off, uh, off the top of my head. But here it is. Mark 13, 14. Uh, the one you shall see the abomination of desolation spoken by Daniel the prophet. You know, is talking about the tribulation throughout the time of Jacob's trouble, falsely called the tribulation. Uh, standing where it ought not, let him that readeth understand. Then let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains. You know, again, who, why, what are we doing in Judea? It's talking to Jews. Very, very clearly, it's talking to the Jews. Uh, is that now? Let me show you some uh, proofs for the pre-trip, for the uh, quote-unquote pre-trip rapture, which is not a biblical term. I'll show you some proof of that here's here's the best way to nail these heretics to the wall. I already showed you that it's talking to the Jews right there. Because we're like, what are we doing in Judea? It's not talking to us. Here, I did this in one of my previous videos. Here's how you just nail this, these post-tribbers to the wall. Uh, Acts chapter 9, verse 1 to 5. And Saul, yet breathing on threatenings and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord, went unto the high priest, and desired of him letters to Damascus, to the synagogues, or yet, uh, that, that if he be found any of this way, whether they be men or women, he might bring them bound unto Jerusalem. And as he journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly there shined a light around him uh, from heaven. And he, fell, and he fell to the earth, and a voice, and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? Uh, and verse 5, And he said, Where, Who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. Now, what's going on here? Well, Saul was never actually persecuting Jesus Christ in person. But you know what he was doing? He was persecuting his church, his body. He was persecuting Christians. And guess what? It was affecting Jesus in heaven. He was saying, Why are you persecuting me? Because, it, because we're, we're part of the body of Christ, in almost a literal sense. So if we're being persecuted, it's affecting Jesus Christ. Well, you have a bit of a problem there, because if we go into the uh, tribulation, have kind of a problem there, because Revelation chapter 5, verse 9, And they sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book, and to open the seals thereof, for thou wast slain, and hast redeemed us to, us to God, uh, by the blood out of every kindred, tongue, people, and nation. So, wait a second. If, basically, if Paul was persecuting Jesus Christ, and it, or persecuting his body, but he was also, it was affecting Jesus Christ, but Jesus Christ is opening the seals uh, upon the earth. So, basically, you mean to tell me he's going to open the seals on himself? You know? Because if he's opening the seals on the uh, Christians in the time of Jacob's trouble, and we're part of his body, that means he'd be opening the seals on himself. You mean to tell me he's doing that? Yeah, sure. Here's another really good proof for the um, quote-unquote pre-trip rapture. Here's one Here's one they really can't... Like that, that one right there is pretty good, but here's another really, really good one they can't handle. And here's another thing, too. They'll say, um, show me one verse that proves a pre-trip rapture. I can't show you one verse, but I can show you by comparing scripture with scripture. You know, 
here's here's what they do, or, or here's a good way to prove them wrong. Um, I'm going to show you uh, a couple more proofs after this one. Uh, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 1 to 8, or I think 1 to 6. I'll, I'll keep reading, but uh, now we beseech you, brethren, at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, by our gathering together unto him, we gather together, that ye uh, uh, be not soon shaken in mind, or be troubled, neither by spirit, or by, nor by sword, nor by letter, as from us, as the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you uh, by any means, for the day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and, the, and that the man of sin be revealed the son of perdition. Now it's kind of funny because they'll stop at verse three. They'll say, "See, it won't happen. It won't happen until after the Son of Man, uh, uh, the Son of Perdition, is revealed." Okay, here's what you have to do. Okay, keep reading past verse three. Okay, notice the uh, how it's not a period. It's that little thing right there. Okay, it's not done. The sentence. The sentence isn't finished yet. Okay, keep reading past verse three. Okay, let me show, let me show you why I'm saying this. Who opposes himself and exalts himself above all that is called God and that is, or that is worship, so that God as he as sitteth, or that so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. So it's talking about the Antichrist. I uh, remember, remember, remember ye, ye not that when I was uh, yet with you, I told you these things. Look at look at this. Here here's how you nail him to the wall. And here's why I'm saying read past verse three. Okay. Now he. Or not, and now you know that which hold, that which sorry, know what withholdeth, not good reading, what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. Hmm. For the, or verse seven, for the mystery, mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. So okay, I'll, I'll keep reading, but and then shall that wicked be revealed, and the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy the brightness of with the brightness of his coming. So what's going on here? Well, there's someone, there's something that's stopping the Antichrist. It's hindering the Antichrist from showing up. That's what it says, he that lives uh, he, until he be taken out of the way. Someone needs to be taken out of the way first. Who is that? It's the body of Christ. Let me show you that. Revelation chapter 5, now back to Revelation chapter 5, verse 9. Again, you compare scripture with scripture. Revelation chapter 5, verse 9. And they sung in a song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof, for thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred, tongue, people, and nation. It's talking about believers, and they're in heaven singing uh, praises to Jesus as he's opening the seals. Okay? How does this prove a preacher of rapture? Because this, notice how this happens before the Antichrist is revealed in Revelation chapter 6, verse 2. I'll show you that. And I saw, behold, a white horse. I saw, and behold, a white horse. And he that sat on him had a bow and a crown, and was given unto him, and he went forth conquering and to conquer. So, you have First, Second Thessalonians chapter two, which talks about someone has to be taken out of the way before the Antichrist can show up. Revelation chapter five verse nine talks about blood redeemed saints in heaven, and it's before the Antichrist is revealed in Revelation chapter six verse two. Okay, what is this proof? Well, word the body of Christ is stopping the Antichrist from showing up, so we have to be taken out of the way first before they can he can show up. Yeah. I mean, you want some strong proof, there's some strong proof right there. Just compare Second Thessalonians chapter 2 with Revelation chapter 5, and then compare Revelation chapter 5 verse 9 to Revelation 6 2, and there you go, you got your preacher of rapture. Because you have blood redeemed saints in heaven before the Antichrist is revealed in Revelation 6 2. So, yeah, and here's one more proof, uh, kind of a, another, another good one to throw at them. First Corinthians chapter 6 verse 9 to 11. Or, or I'll start at verse 11. And such were some of you, but you are washed, but you are sanctified, but you are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. So right now, it's Jesus Christ. He's washing us in his blood. But this is not true in the time of Jacob's trouble. Revelation uh, 7.14, it says, And I said unto, uh, said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. And he said to me, These are they which came out of great tribulation, and have washed wa they have washed their robes, and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. We have a bit of a contradiction here, because in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, Christ washes us, but in, in Revelation 7, 14, they're washing themselves. What do you got there? Well, uh, it's a contradiction, because if we go into this time period, then God's a liar. Because if we go into this time period, we're going to have to wash our own robes. So we must be taken out before this time period, or else God's a liar. So those are three proofs that just totally destroy the... Uh, post-trip rapture heresy. That's what it is. It's a satanic heresy. So don't be deceived by this post-trip nonsense. God bless you. Goodbye.